It's time now for Dr. K. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is a retired physician, also founder of HealthWatch USA, a national organization. Hey, good morning to you, Dr. K. Uh, good morning, Jack. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you. Let's talk about India there and Brazil, for that matter, too. Uh, are, are there lessons to be learned from, from those two countries? Well, I think there's a lot. The most important thing is this virus needs to be taken seriously. Even last week, I was talking to someone from the area around here who still was denying that this was a serious problem in the United States, that the virus is just like the flu. Well, it's not. You can look and see what's happening in India. And they made many of the same missteps, only really didn't have any of the counterbalances that we had in the United States, which really got out some of our public health strategies. As you know, in India, they still have very, very large rallies. They would dwarf the size of our rallies or riots or gatherings that we had outdoors. And they also had very large religious gatherings. And this, they felt, spread the virus, along with having an inferior health care system and a number of variants that they're cooking up, some of which is that double mutation variant. So. That all combined was a toxic mix, which put them in a terrible situation, which they are still in. Right now, when I talk to my doctor friends over in India, they tell me they can't even count the dead. They're just turning away people. It's a very distressing thing. And that's what could have happened in the United States if we didn't mobilize a public health response. And I think that's the number one thing we need to take home. And then just look at all the conspiracy theories and, and you can keep in mind who is spreading them, but hydroxychloroquine obviously didn't work. India takes that quite frequently because of malaria. It didn't do much to stop or blunt the pandemic over there. And I think they are in trouble. I'm not sure it's going to be able to turn around the pandemic quite as quickly as we were able in the United States because they don't have the health care system. And also, you can see what happens when you do not have universal health care, that one person can affect all. And that is something that is very significant over in India. They are running out of oxygen, running out of supplies. In fact, in areas they have just plain ran out of them. So this is something that as a country we need to step up and we need to support. And also when you worry about the Indian variant, you need to really realize that that underscores the importance of why we need to invest in the public health of other nations. It's just not the United States. You can't close your borders completely to this type of a virus. You can slow down its spread, but it's best to snuff it out in other countries. And that means having an active foreign service with the CDC, getting other countries vaccinated, because we will really never reach herd immunity unless we reach this as a global nation. Even if we reach it in the United States, another variant will most likely pop up in a far region of the world, and it will then eventually make its way back here. So there are a number of lessons, there are a number of warnings, and we really do need to take this virus seriously. Now, how about uh, vaccine hesitancy in the police and the armed forces? Well, this is really disturbing to me because we need to have our country's defense. We need to have the police up to 100 percent functioning level. And it is close to 50 percent vaccine hesitancy in some of these uh, institutions. In fact, some of the cities, such as Columbus, 28 percent of the employees have been vaccinated. And this is really way too low. They are upfront with the public. They're in close contact with the public. Armed forces, same way. They oftentimes have to live in close quarters with one another, and we need them to respond to foreign governments. And we need to encourage these individuals to become vaccinated. Again, I think a lot of the people are following the false narrative that, well, I'm younger, I'm well fit, this virus is just like the flu, and therefore I don't need to get vaccinated. Well, reality check, you do. These vaccines have been shown to be extremely safe. They've been followed many, many times in greater than six months. And Jack, we really need to get people vaccinated. And that also includes healthcare personnel. Our frontline services, that should be part of the job. Yeah. Here's one more thing. The latest anti-vax myth, vaccine shedding. What is that? 
Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. And that's been written up in some of the medical press. And that's where they're going around saying, well, people are shedding the coronavirus, a spike protein, just the spike protein. And that's causing miscarriages, sterility, and all sorts of things. And Jack, that is utter nonsense. First of all, if you have the coronavirus and you're an asymptomatic carrier, you're going to be shedding it a lot more. You should be more worried about the full virus. Second, what goes on, and we've discussed this before, what goes on with the vaccine only goes on in your arm. It doesn't go on anywhere else, and the body quickly snuffs it out. The mRNA, very unstable. You don't keep making that spike protein forever, and that's just within your arm. So it really doesn't make much sense. And what drives me crazy is, is that research is showing is that if you're worried about infertility, you should be worried if you are a male and get COVID-19 because these viruses tend to target the ACE2 receptor. And the ACE2 receptor is very prevalent in the testicles. And there is small amounts of sperm or oligospermia that have been shown and found in up to 40% of people who are hospitalized in the ICU, etc. So this is a real concern, but it's a concern if you're a male and get infected. And that's the group that doesn't want to get the vaccine. So to me, it really doesn't make much sense. Please go out and get vaccinated. Remember, this virus affects every organ of the body. And we're hearing more and more about long-term sequelae, which are occurring frequently in those which have mild infections. Thank you, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, as always. Thank you, Jack.